Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. What's up? Thanks for checking us out. Uh, if it is your first time here, what's going on? My name is Jersey. Nice to have you. Take a look around. Hopefully you like the place. If you do, go back and watch. we got a ton of episodes, and this is a weekly podcast, and it's a weekly on YouTube, so check, uh, watch, or listen, or whatever you want, and um, hopefully you enjoy it. If you are part of the nation and you are somebody who watches every single week or listens to the podcast every single week while you work, what is going on? What's up? It is because of you that we get to do the show, so thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us a thumbs up right now. We'll wait. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, and if you are listening to this on iTunes, please go and review it on iTunes. Hopefully it's a great review, but uh, do what you will. Uh, we definitely appreciate it, and share it. That's the biggest part of this video. It is your duty to be part of the nation, is to share this out in any Facebook group or any group that you're part of that you think anybody could learn anything or even just waste some time with us. That would be epic. And if you are one of the elite, somebody who watches every video religiously, thumbs up, comments, subscribes, all that cliche stuff, and even better, you buy your supplies from me, what's going on it's because of you that i get to eat dinner tonight so that's cool thank you very much for doing that and if you have any questions or like to buy any supplies i am a rep for window cleaning resource and my number direct is 862-312-2026 and yes that is my cell phone so if you want to shoot me a text and tell me I like turtles or my nose is crooked or whatever. People do it all the time. Um, I love that. I love hearing from you guys just saying what's up from wherever. I watch the show and I love it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for checking us out and doing that. So with all that being said, please comment down below if you are watching on YouTube. We do pick a winner every single week. Just comment right now. Take the time. Be like, hey, it's great. I love it. I don't love it. Say whatever. We appreciate it. So with all that being said, we are talking to the man, Mr. Draper. What's going on? Hey, buddy. Not oh. much. Just living the dream. Nice, nice. I love it. I love the logo, man. This is, uh, this is a new venture. If you are new kind of to the channel, this is something absolutely brand new. This just came out, what, a few weeks ago. Your, your, your program, the app, the systems, the whole package is what, four weeks old maybe? Yeah, so, uh, you know, many of us probably, or many of the viewers and stuff like that probably seen us on AWC TV and, and American Window Cleaning Magazine and that. But, uh, yeah, so March 1st, uh, it's not really, you know, uh, it's kind of public news. I mean, I, I left my uh, job at, uh, at Jay Racenstein. And uh, so and with that, um, entered into the marketplace, so to speak. And, yeah, I want to do some things. And uh, so one of the things that uh, I'm very passionate about, even when I was at Racenstein, um, I was very passionate about the, the J Racing Scene University. We created that, and in that was uh, a safety series. And so, safety is really uh, one of my passions, and uh, you know, just educating and training uh, people. And uh, so, we wanted to continue on with that. And we felt like there was a little bit of a gap, um, especially uh, the online with you know Facebook and some of the social medias, where um, there was all these groups, but you had a lot of varying opinion as to what safety was or what you could yeah. do, what you couldn't do. And so, yeah, we launched our Facebook page, uh, windowcleanersafety.com. And, um, that is just a place where guys can, can go. We, we put stuff up, we put pictures up, we analyze stuff, but it's just a credible source where, where guys can go and get a, a straight answer and a right answer as to what OSHA 1910 general industry standard, how it governs us and what the, what the right and proper ways are. Yeah. You want to know, like I always say, Facebook is great. It really, really is great. The forums, the knowledge, everything, but you have to troll such a big net just to fish out the crap first, because guys will go on there and say the dumbest. I mean, we, you know, you're, you're part of uh, pro window cleaning. She's one of our groups. So many dumb things are said sometimes, but we just don't moderate because we figure people are adults. You know, we try, try, try very hard not to moderate, but guys will go in there and say the dumbest things, you know, Oh, I don't need a safety harness. I just tie it off to my belt. And they literally put it out there and there's just not that source for like, okay, what is said in this group is absolutely real and right. And that's what sounds like you guys are really kind of doing. 
Yeah, it is. And we've got, you know, there's a lot of credible guys uh, in their industry, you know, uh, Jeff Scott with uh, Green Safety and that, and he, he helps me monitor it as well and, and nice. will chime in and say stuff. But we just want, you know, um, you, you know, we want a place where guys can actually get a, a, an honest answer. And uh, we try to, when there is a chatter back and forth about different stuff, we try to quote. Um, I know that when I'm, when I'm in it, I'm going to quote, I'm going to quote OSHA 1910 nice. right from, from their deal. And basically here it is. And, uh, it, there's just, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of wild speculation out there as to what you have to do, what you don't have to do. Um, some guys don't care. And you know what, if you don't have employees, you don't have to care because yeah. OSHA doesn't, doesn't care about, uh, you know, a, a, a sole proprietor doing the work he care, they care about an employee employer relationship. Right. And, uh, so, and if you don't care and it doesn't apply to you, then just, you know, go do what you want to do. But a guy that has employees has to, has to, uh, come down to this just general industry standard. And that's, that's the law of the land. Yeah. I think, uh, I've, I've taken some safety courses in the past and one of my favorite parts of them is to, um, <clears throat> is to see OSHA pictures because OSHA takes pictures of violations and, and I don't know how people get them, but I've seen them in some of these classes and they're just, I mean, you know, buckets filled with concrete and a, a loop to tie over. There's, some of the stuff is just absolutely absurd that people think they can get away with. And, and it's, it's dangerous, but it's funny to see after the fact, like, really, that you thought was a good idea? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of it out there. Um, I love uh, social media because you get some of your best content on social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But, you know, uh, one thing, you know, <clears throat> Window cleaners. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm always shocked at how many window cleaners don't know that the the manufacturer of stack ladders um, has put a stipulation on a height requirement. And so the new for Metallica now it's it is 21 feet, which means you can only have four pieces. They come six foot sections now, so you could only have four pieces put together. And you'll see all these pictures. These guys lining these things up. You know, 10, 12 sections. Yeah. And it's like. Well, I just hope there's not employees on them because, you know, that that could be a potential fine. Yeah. And here's the thing, too. Everybody says OSHA it is the uh, the quintessential four-letter word here kind of in their industry. But here's the thing. You remember the first time you drove, for the you know, were behind the wheel in driver's ed, you were terrified because you didn't know how the car worked. You didn't know, you know, if you did this, what happened with it. You just didn't know. So you were terrified. Now you've been driving so long, you know, it's not scary anymore. It's the same thing with OSHA. OSHA is not necessarily out there to destroy people. They just want to make sure that, you know, things are safe and done right. And if you understand it, there's nothing to be scared of. Yeah, no, that's so true. And, and to me, you know, when we got this 1910 in, in January 2017, um, it, to me, it kind of leveled the playing field because, um, you know, high rise guys have always had some sort of um, standard that they were playing to. Most of it was, you know, the I-14 standard. And that was fine, but that was a voluntary standard. And so you had some guys doing it, some guys not doing it. And so it was just willy nilly all over the place. Well, with 1910, we now have a, a, a you know, a platform which everybody plies by. And uh, probably the big shocker that, uh, you know, that 1910 did is, because uh, it used to be, you know, I remember just even saying this too, when we did only residential, uh, well, it doesn't really apply to us because it's, it's those high-rise guys. Yeah. And so when we got into high-rise, then, you know, we, we started being more safety conscious ourselves when I owned my business. But now everybody's involved because it mentions residential roofs. It talks about, you know, residential settings. It talks about ladders. It talks about all the things that, any window cleaner is going to use. So everybody's involved now. It's not yeah. just high rise guys. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is, and I shouldn't say funny. The tragic thing is, is that the most dangerous tool that any window cleaner can use, this is high rise, low rise, residential, anything is the ladder. And people don't understand that. So to have no standards kind of in that side of things was really kind of dropping the ball on that side of it. But, but I mean, with everything said, everybody thinks of the high rise stuff. They think of uh, harnesses and ropes and helmets, and the, but there's so much more to that. That I mean, that's why waterfront poles are are so big is the safety aspect of it. It's, it. Listen, window cleaning is is really driven by men. We're, it's a man, you know, a, a male industry really, where janitorial seems to be more of a female for whatever reason. There's the the discourse there, but 
with men, it's very hard to be like, oh, are you safe? Nah, shh, I don't care. I've been doing, you know, guys have this weird mentality that like to be safe is nerdy. Like I'm not wearing those glasses, you know, or I'm not putting, but the truth of the matter is, is that if you're a sole proprietor out there working, or if you have employees and you're still on the job, or if you get hurt, you make no money. If an employee gets hurt, it's a whole nother world of like crap storm that's going to hit you because now all that is going to be investigated. So it really is something yeah. that people need to kind of take seriously. But above all of that, well, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, just, just think about it. I mean, I know, and I'm sure you can rattle off names too, but I know guys in our industry that are in wheelchairs because of ladder falls. Yeah. I know guys that, you know, had to be off of work because well, um, Diego, for instance, last year, I mean, that was a ladder deal, right? Yeah. I mean, so ladders, you're exactly right. Ladders are the most dangerous tool that we window cleaners use. We take it for granted. Um, but I tell you what, um, it doesn't matter. The, the, they always say that the two people that are most susceptible to an accident is the guy that's been doing it forever and the brand new person, mm -hmm. right? Because, and you can tell why that would be. So, you know, hey, I've been in this business a long time and, uh, uh, I, I felt uh, it wasn't serious, but I had a ladder slip on me on a deck here not too long ago. And, um, you know, it happens. And uh, when it happens, sometimes it doesn't end well. And um, so you can talk about high rise being unsafe and all this stuff. Actually, uh, you start depending on how high that ladder is going to be. I'd rather be on a rope any day yeah. rather than on a 30 or 40 ladder. I'll guarantee that. Oh, yeah. And we all, like you said, you have the horror stories. We had a guy which they knew they weren't supposed to do this. We talked about it that morning, but still... One of my employees decided he knew better than me and uh, used a little giant style ladder, which did just had the round bottom on there. There's not the feet on top of a tin roof. So he's on a ladder on top of a roof and shot the ladder off, fell onto the roof, shot the ladder off the roof and he didn't fall. Thank goodness. Uh, he, but he hurt himself a little bit and stuff like that's just, I mean, you just don't think about it. You go, oh man, you see that? Oh man, I almost really, I had a guy, uh, it was actually my brother's sergeant in the army, he decided to start, uh, Bubba Kowski, if anybody knows from the forum, and he f was pressure washing a second story from the first story roof and just walked off the roof, first story, so you're talking, you know, 10 foot maybe from the gutter edge, broke both of his ankles, ended up having one of them amputated because it just wasn't healing properly, and that's like, those are things that like we try not to think about because they're awful things that have happened, but you, we gotta be safe, you gotta kinda take it, but... Wait. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, and I, I talk about this in my classes all the time. I mean, oh, we can talk about OSHA and we can talk about 1910 and, you know, all of these different things. And, you know, that's fine. But the, the, the reality is, is that I just want window cleaners to go home at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, most most people have um, families. They're trying to pay their bills. They're trying to, you know, just just out there grinding, doing, you know, just trying to survive. And so how unfortunate it is, forget the fines that could come with it, but just the fact that you might not go home or that you would go to the hospital and cause your family um, problems with medical bills or, or things that you, you know, possibly can't pay for. That's the deal to me. I mean, that's, that's what we don't want happening. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you where it started getting real, real for me. I mean, when we did high rise, when I owned clearly, it was the same way because a lot of my employees, um, several of them were related to me. And, you know, I, we, we went above and beyond uh, on, on high-rise safety because I, I just could not ever fathom going to their family and saying, you know what, um, you know, John didn't come home today. He, you know, he, he, his rope did this or it did whatever because we were negligent. We, yeah. we thought it was cool just to skip some things and we wanted to get done today. And so now he's not with you tonight. Yeah. You know, I just couldn't do that. And then, and then further was when, after I'd sold my business and we started uh, Central and I Roof Wash, well, my boy, my son and my son-in-law are the, are the employees of that company. Then it became really serious to me. I mean, it was serious before, but it was like, okay, now this is real. We're getting on roofs. My son's up there. My son-in-law's up there. People I care about dearly. And, uh, you know, this, this is serious. So, um, that's when we really start thinking even more about, okay, how are we going to tie off on a residential roof? How are we going to be safe? How are, how are my son's not going to fall? I mean, and so, um, you know, you can just imagine that that's, you know, it's, it's, it's serious. To me. It's really serious. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned classes. Uh, what do you do in these classes? Like what, what, I mean, run over for people who haven't done classes. Maybe they think that's stupid. I'm not going to read out of a book or watch some guy go, 
And in this, that you know, pull up bullet point. What do you do in these classes? Kind of let us know on that. Yeah, so um, we've got uh, several different classes. So one of the things, like you know, the IWCA, they do some safety classes. And what we've really tried to do is we've tried to take these classes and focus them in on the the actual work that the guy's doing. So one of them is a residential window clean, and within that. Um, you know, we've got ladder safety, we've got uh, water fed pole safety, we've got chemical safety, uh, all the things you don't think about electrical hazards. Yeah. But what we do is we run people through uh, the different hazards that exist in the workplace uh, on a residential home, for instance, in that class. And then we, we spend a great deal of time on, you know, what OSHA really wants is, um, and they've got little different placards, and I've put them up on my thing too, but to plan, provide, and train. That's, that's their deal. Plan the work, you know, provide the proper equipment and the tools and train everybody on it. Yeah. And um, so that's what we essentially try to do in our classes is um, how do we look at the work site? How do we identify the hazards? How to, and what OSHA wants you to do with these hazards is they know that hazards exist. They know that if a, a construction guy is out on the site and he's running a circular saw, there's a chance that, you know, he could cut his finger off. So they're not saying, you know, just eliminate a saw. They're just saying, hey, know that hazard exists and then prepare for it. Keep all the guards on the saw, uh, you know, keep, you know, your fingers away, all this stuff. So that's really what they want us to do on our sites as well. Is once we've identified the hazards, hey, there's an electrical hazard on the west side of that house. OK, now we're going to train the employees on it. We're going to tell them about it. And then we're going to we're going to show them how to either mitigate the hazard or eliminate it. Yeah. And in that case, you're not going to eliminate it. The electrical hazard comes in, so it's there. You're not going to eliminate that hazard. Right. Um, so, but how do you mitigate it? How do we, you know, we set up proper distances not to be there, but we spend a lot of time on JHA, job hazard analysis. And, um, you know, that's really a requirement too. The, the um, OSHA expects the employer to um, identify these hazards that, are, that a potential employee is going out to, to encounter. And not only then uh, identify them, but how are they going to deal with them and what equipment are they going to use to to help mitigate the risk? So we spend a lot of time on that in the residential section. Um, we've got a ladder only class uh, that we nice. go through. We go through all the manufacturer requirements on their ladders with the things that they uh, put in place. Um, we talk about what you know, what are the OSHA requirements? What does OSHA say on certain things? Um, destabilization of a ladder, how we can correct that. Um, and just how we can ultimately be safe. Again, OSHA is one thing, but going home at the end of the day is another. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. And then we have a high rise safety class as well. Um, as you know, that, you know, some of these things have changed. We, we go into a lot about uh, at the building, what has to happen at the building before a person can even go over. Um, you know, one of the, the newest things now is guys can't work unless the building owner gives them a written a document that says the anchors on the building have been certified and uh -huh. and all this there's a lot of things that happen at the building before the descent even takes place and so we talk about that then we talk about the actual tools that that people are going to use and and um, if it's my class that I've put on and it's kind of a general session then I'm going to talk about all the different descenders and all the different rope grabs and all the different harnesses and things if it's if I'm going into a custom class like the couple that we just did then I'm going to look at what they're using I'm going to say, okay, well, let's train. You're supposed to be trained on the equipment that you're issued. So let's look at what you've been issued. I might show you a couple different ways that I think might be uh, better or improve yourself. Um, but ultimately, it's up to them. It's up to what, whatever equipment they've been issued. And so we train on that equipment. Nice. And then we do, uh, we do self-rescue. We do a pick, pick rescue. Um, we just, you know, we show them these things. Show that one of the things OSHA says is that you have to have a safety plan. And, uh, you know, we know from harnesses, uh, which a lot of the guys wear that if they're in that back, uh, back attachment on a harness, um, you know, you got to move pretty quickly. You can't just rely on the fire department. So, yeah. um, you know, all those things and, uh, we go through it pretty much in depth and we really bring, uh, ocean 1910 into all of it. Nice. And, and it's funny is that business owners, they will go above and beyond to learn, you know, Facebook for their business and they'll go above and beyond to learn uh, marketing and they'll take classes on all everything that they could possibly learn, which is great. People are listening to this show for that reason. They read AWC for that reason, you know, all that. But then when it comes to safety, I mean, you know, 0.01% of people have taken a safety class. You know, that to me is sometimes shocking because, again, we just figure, we do things the safe way. How do you know? You know, how do you know what the best way is? 
You have an accountant because tax laws change all the time. Why do you not have a safety guy? Because safety, OSHA standards and safety standards and everything else change all the time. So it's pretty hard. But again, there's that that kind of male mentality sometimes. And I'll probably get hate mail from this for sure, whatever. But that's really what it is. I mean, I've had guys before who, you know, you tell them, oh, you got to wear your PPE. Ah, well, you know, I hate that. I'm not looking like a nerd with my glasses. And it's like... Okay, well, I'll show you some uh, pictures and videos of glasses that have saved people's lives for doing, you know, but it's it's a hard it's a hard concept, you know. But- yeah, most guys look at safety and they think that it's a you know again it's a mandate or it's a um, it's a um, something that uh, it costs them money basically, yeah. right? And uh, that that is something that I do teach in the class is um, how to sell safety. Um, we had a great deal of success, uh, about, I, I, I use a little analogy about talking, talking, uh, um, about things that make people uncomfortable, right? So when you go to a building, for instance, um, guys don't, you know, they're like, they might see the safety risk, but they don't want to talk about it. They want to bring it up because it's like, oh, well then, then that might, you know, that might trigger this or it might trigger that. Yeah. We love to bring stuff up like that. Now, when we were doing high rise work, we'd love to bring up the fact that there wasn't pins on the building. And, you know, we at the time we had a couple different ways that we we, you know, circumvented that. But um, we'd bring it up and we'd say, hey, you know, uh, I'm sure you're going to get three bids. So, you know, here's our here's the way we're going to do it. Here's our safety plan on this. And just ask the other three how they plan on doing it. Yeah. You know, and, and we Josh, we we took jobs many many times uh, at higher prices because we were willing to have that conversation up front. So I train these guys all the time that come through our classes. You get these little certifications, certificate of completions, all this stuff. Lay that stuff out, man. It, it's just like telling somebody you got insurance. Tell them you're safety trained. Tell them you're going to abide by OSHA rules. Tell them that you know this stuff and um, sell it. Don't mm-hmm. just stop. I mean, if you just spend the money to go through the class and you never speak about it, you know, shame on you. Because most of your competitors probably aren't trained. They might not even know. They're still out there stacking 15 stack ladders together. Yeah, right. you know, they don't know that there's a requirement. So, you know, sell it, sell it, sell it. And, and ultimately, it's not a, something that costs you money then. It's something that makes you money. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, people hire you. Even if you're new in the business, they're hiring you as a window cleaner because you're the professional. You know, right? This is why people go, well, what if somebody argues about water fit? You tell them, I have the best equipment out there. It's the same thing with safety. You can hand them your safety, like you said. You would do a job, do a bid, and then you'd hand them your plan of action for safety. And that Absolutely. right there, that shows you're a professional. Absolutely. Uh, your, your safety plans, even your, your insurance and all that, I, I tell guys, I said, don't, you know, you see all these websites and they're, I'm insured, I'm this, I'm that. I, I always say never put anything on your website that you're not you're not showing the customer in person. So if mm. you're saying you're insured, then put an insurance policy in the estimate pack. Show yeah. me. You know, don't wait on me to accept the bid before you show me you're insured. You know, give me a certificate. You don't have to name them as additional insured, but show them the cert. Yeah, flood, flood the them with info. Flood yeah. them with information about your company, and then they can't help but choose you because they know every bit about it. I've had extra right. guys about even insurance that have said that they don't show their insurance certificate or tell people how much they're insured for because they feel like somebody's going to try to sue them for that amount of money or something. That's, I mean, there's just ideas out there that are just ridiculous. But So you also have an app out, and you were just saying that you're now on iTunes and Google Play, right? Or yes, Android, I should both. say. Yeah. Yep, <clears throat> both of them. So um, what we did, Josh, is, you know, with with Jay Racenstein University when I was still with Racenstein and and now probably ran about I don't know three to four hundred people through through safety classes and what I noticed was um, in order to 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 think about a JHA or a job hazard analysis you you really have to understand the the what the hazard is and what OSHA asks and required before you can really fill one out properly. And so when we got to that part of the class, every time it seemed like, you know, guys would get it and we would walk through and we would train it. But I could just tell by the, you know, some of the blank looks in the class and this and that, that it wasn't going to be something they were going to be easily, they were easily going to be able to integrate into their business. And so for me, it was, it was problematic. We were teaching something, but it was like, it it wasn't sinking in. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't going to be applied in the field. Yeah. 
And so about a year ago, um, I started thinking about the JHA process and thinking, how could, how could we simplify this? How could we make this dumbed down so that a person could basically you know, go through those series of processes and get, get, a, get an actual JHA? And so what we did is we, for residential and commercial, we created this app. And the way it works is you fill in your job information and who, who, who created it. And then you decide residential or commercial. And so, and then what we've done is we know that in our business, uh, many of the hazards, they repeat themselves. Yeah. So we're going to use ladders. We're going to have electrical hazards. We're going to use chems. We're going to use all these things that just keep repeating. So what happens is a person just has to answer a series of questions or actually just swipes. It's basically on there. It says electrical hazards. You touch it and it's going to populate for you. And then it gives you wow. a little description box so you can say, yeah, electrical hazard on north side of house. So you go through all the little series, you just touch it, and it auto-populates, and then you hit done, and it creates the JHA for you. Wow. And so it, it sets up the sequence of work. Okay, there's going to be ladder work. Here's the potential hazard with it, and here's how we're going to mitigate the hazard. Yeah. Right? So everything is done, so then an owner or salesperson, however the company is structured, can take that back, and then once that's done... It's like, okay, well, now I can assign guys to this. Okay, there's electrical hazards. I'm going to send Johnny because Johnny has been trained in electrical hazards before. And uh, I'm going to send Tommy and, and Larry because they, they're ladder trained and they know how to set up a, um, you know, a extend a leg or whatever on the ladder. And that's the hazard that exists. So it sets your training up and it sets the, the expectations up right off the bat. And so it's really cool. Um, the, and the way, and, and also, our, like a residential, for instance, let's say a guy's out there and he's just driving business. Once you do a JHA, you don't really need to do one again. Susie Johnson's house is probably not going to change that much, right? Right. So what it is is in the app, it, you say create PDF, and it'll create it and auto-populate the JHA. You can email it, you can text it, or you can you can send it somewhere. So like um, the customer factor, for instance, a lot of guys are using the customer factor. They can upload it right into the customer profile wow. uh, for the customer. So now every time you do Susie Johnson's house, print out the JHA, it's done. It's right there. You don't have to worry about the, the hazard anymore on that particular place. So it's an awesome tool. I'm super excited about it. Um, I think it's going to allow guys to be safer out there. They're going to they're kind of understand the JHA process. And, yeah, it's available on, on both um, on Apple and uh, in the Android store. Here's the really th cool thing about it. I, I'm a window cleaner. Um, I know window cleaners. They're cheap, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? They're, they're, any, they're cheap. I believe yeah. it. I don't believe so, it. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we kept that in mind. So guess what? Um, if you're a small guy starting out, uh, well, first of all, the app, you download it for free. Nice. So no cost. Um, if you're a small guy and you just want to get going, um, you can just buy one or two or three or four credits. Don't have to don't have to come in all the way. If you're a guy out there driving it and you're trying to do 500 new customers a year and and you don't want to pay per credit, then there's an unlimited. And the unlimited, you can write as many JHAs as want, upload them into Customer Factor or Service Monster or whatever you want to. It's 19 bucks a month. And nobody else so, that you're bidding against has this at their fingertips unless they have the app. Like there's not another app like this. It's not like oh well, there's like three of them like this, but ours. Do. There is no other ones that are this easy. So there's not. It's not out there. These guys are not being able to produce this. It sets you way above the other guy in just the selling side of things. Not to mention having that, your employees going to those jobs on the way to the job can go over everything. They have it right in front of them, so there's no surprises on their end either. It's flooding somebody with knowledge. That, that's exactly it. And so once you have a JHA and you're in your estimate process and all that, I would show the JHA to the customer. Say, Mrs. Johnson, here's what we've identified is that potential hazards around the house. We're a very safe company. We want safety is a number one priority for both my sake and your sake. We don't want anybody falling or getting hurt here at your property. Yeah. And so this is what we've identified. This is how we're going to act safely and work safely. And we'll leave a copy of that with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. Let, let somebody let somebody come behind me without that and see if I don't win that job. Yeah. Well, everybody's looking for the USP too. You know, their unique selling point. Their their thing. What are you selling? Sell me you. We're the safest company around. 
Every single yeah. customer gets this. Every single customer gets that. They get the insurance. They're flooded with the whole packet. Now the next guy who comes up on a little uh, Office Depot carbon copy something and gives them a, a... There's no competition. They're not looking at price. Like I said, if you buy something, I could sell you something right now for $1,000... Once I tell you it's a Ferrari, you know, before you know what something is, people only focus on price. Once you're telling them what they're getting for that price isn't even an issue. And this is the same thing. You're right. just telling them why you're more valuable than the next guy. Yep. And we want to take it one step further too, Jeff, because, um, again, uh, safety is my passion. So education, we want guys to be able to, to learn and, and things like that in the field. So we put a learning section right in the app. And you don't have to get into the, the – um, the business side of anything. Once you download the app, this is free for you. Wow. So what we did is we took sections out. And so we said, okay, ladders. And then what we did is we listed all the OSHA codes that deal with ladders so that if a guy's out there and he's like, I don't know, can we set a ladder that way? Can we do that? All he has to do is go into the ladders. He can educate himself on what OSHA wow. says. And we've done the same for Kim's. We've done the same thing for PPE. We've done the same thing for uh, rope descent systems, all that stuff, so that it's right at their fingertips. They've got it. Yeah. And um, so, like I say, I think it's really cool. Obviously, we developed it. Yeah. But I just think it's going to uh, going to help out a lot of guys uh, start to be compliant with OSHA uh, without having to, uh, the big learning curve. Mm -hmm. Well, once you know the stuff, you're not scared of it. You understand it. You know, it, it's bettering the business. It's bettering your business. The same same reason people are still listening. It's bettering it. So I think it's awesome. I'm glad that you came on with that in general because I know this has been in the works for a while and I know that it just kind of finally launched fully with the app. So I'm super stoked that you even uh, came on and, and talked about it because I've, I'm, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be just amazing and it's really, really going to change kind of the safety side of the industry, which, like you said before, just isn't even talked about really. It's just kind of scared and, and people run away from it so i think it's going to be pretty huge so tell us tell us the facebook group uh your email tell us all your information how we can get a hold of you check this out all that stuff yeah so um on facebook you can uh windowcleanersafety.com just go for that page you're going to see it you're going to see the logo that's got popped up here in the back um and so feel free to come on there you can contact me that way um, my direct email is Michael Draper 1973 at gmail.com. Um, so you can get me at that anytime. Um, so yeah, the, our website also will show the app. We're going to be shooting some more videos, kind of walking you through how everything works. And, um, you know, we're, we're just excited and we're here to help. So nice. if you, if you got problems, you got issues. Um, I took a phone call today, you know, a guy's dealing with something. He got OSHA called on him. Hey, how do we correct this? How do we do that? You know, call me up. Let's, Let's make, I'm, I'm all for making the window cleaning industry a respectable industry, a safe one, and one that I, I hope that we never have to have another benefit for somebody or a, another fundraiser or anything for somebody that's fallen off a ladder, gotten shocked with electrical pole, a high rise system, whatever. Um, I, I hope that we could be safe enough where my job, my site, everything else is obsolete. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what's needed. So talk about it and, uh, and learn. So. But anyway, I, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely. So go check that out if you are listening or watching this. It's it's a game changer for real. It really is. If you've done any research on anything else and you've learned Facebook and you've learned uh, marketing and you've learned uh, selling tricks and you've done all the other stuff, this is the next part. Safety, it sets you apart. It's the reason why people are using wire-fed poles. Other than just being faster, it's safer, right? It's not just a cliche term. It really is something that educating yourself on, it makes a huge difference. And like you said, we're just all trying to get home at the end of the day and, um, and, and do what we do. So definitely. But anyway, thank you very much for watching or listening. Again, give us a thumbs up. Go ahead, do that right now. Comment on there. And again, if you need any supplies or have any questions on anything non-safety related, give me a call or shoot me a text is even better, 862-312-2026. Make sure to go check it out. Uh, call Draper. Let him know if you have questions or concerns. He's going to get you set up. And take a class. They are so absolutely valuable. Um, definitely set one up, especially if you're a company who's looking to get to the next level. Definitely do that. And again, I appreciate you guys checking us out. So go out until next week. Go out and be epic. Thanks for watching windowcleaner.com on YouTube. If you like the video, please thumbs up and subscribe. 
and make sure to check back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday so you don't miss a video. And if you're tired of binge watching cat videos, check out WCR Nation's own playlist with every episode at the Window Cleaning Resource YouTube page.